Okay, here we go. Um, this is going to be a nine-part video tutorial slash set of videos on using SoundMiner, in particular using the workflows in SoundMiner to sort of sculpt a library into the UCS standard. So it's going to be fairly involved. Um, we're going to show several examples of different libraries, actually just convert them together and see what it entails and talk about some of the tools available, including particularly the workflows in SoundMiner. So I know that it's pretty daunting to a lot of users who are facing a back catalog, vendors included. I know this has come up in many conversations like, well, we love UCS, we're going to use it moving forward, but I don't know if I'll ever get to my back catalog. Um, I hope that at the end of this sort of set of videos, which I hope won't be too terribly long, you'll have a sense that tackling the back catalog of your libraries isn't as daunting as it probably seems, at least if you're a SoundMiner user and using workflows. There are some pretty cool tools available, and it's really just about logically thinking through re-sculpting your file name and re-sculpting your metadata. And that's what I want to show off here today. So let me point out just a couple things. The workflows functionality we're about to dive into exists in all versions of SoundMiner except the most basic. So every tier except for the lowest tier has the ability to do what we're going to do. And these some, some custom workflows exist uh, as well that we're going to show off that are designed specifically for this task that Justin has written into SoundMiner, which are pretty cool. I do want to point out one additional thing. Um, I think at least one of the workflows that I'm going to point out may not be built into SoundMiner by default. If you go to our homepage, universalcategorysystem.com, and you click here under Resources to bring you to our Google Drive homepage, uh, I mentioned this in the sort of August update that I just posted as well, but if you go to Utilities, SoundMiner Workflows, the additional workflows folder has a couple of additional things. It may be useful to look at some of these additional workflows. I've made a document here that explains what they are. These are actually workflows that are considered sort of building blocks. And when we get into workflows, you'll understand what I mean. Um, these are compound or basically exported workflow sequences. So this is a combination of one or more. And you'll see that there'll be some up here that are basically some examples of some pretty complex things. And if you're not familiar with workflows, uh, you might enjoy downloading some of these and looking through them. I've made comments in them to sort of explain, and we'll talk about what commenting is in, in, a, in a minute when we get into the workflows, but these are some sort of complex ones that might help you understand sort of the concepts of workflows and what you can do with them and things like that. So there are some workflows that basically like, um, you know, assign the category and prepend it to the file name, remove the category ID from the file name. There's an example of a, a build and extract workflow, which is very complicated and isn't really useful now because Justin has written something much more elegant and sort of much better. But as a proof of concept, I made uh, these workflows to basically do all the stuff we're going to talk about in this whole tutorial as a workflow. Again, these are very complicated to look at, but they're, they make sense if you sort of break them down. Um, I have a simple workflow here that everything else was done in your file names, but you simply wanted to extract a vendor category. This is something that can sort of accomplish that. So I just want to point out the existence of this as anybody creates some compound workflows that they think are really useful, they can post them here. We'll be creating some workflows in the course of this tutorial. Maybe I'll come back and I'll post some of those here under the compound workflows, like we're going to tackle a, a recordist library and a sound morph library. And maybe I'll go ahead and post those so that anybody who's interested can download those once we've built them out and sort of see what they're doing. And so again, I hope by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a pretty good grasp of how to sort of take a library or a set of sounds and to move them into the sort of universal category system. Uh, there's a lot of options, but for most vendors, you're gonna have some metadata, you're gonna have some structure already that you're probably gonna to wanna to manipulate, and that's what we'll look at. So in order, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into the workflows in general in the next video and go step-by-step step through all the workflow blocks that are sort of available and explain what each of them does. I think this is a pretty crucial step to understanding what we're about to do and probably the most powerful tool that exists in SoundMiner, in my opinion. Radium is incredible and it's sexy and cool and it's you know super indispensable for doing design work that I do and things. But for all of the maintaining of my library, workflows is what I interact with probably more than almost anything at this point. And it's a feature that I think a lot of people aren't fully aware of. And if they are, they haven't sort of wrapped their head around the power of it. So even if you aren't interested in using the universal category system, the next video on just walking through the workflows might be very interesting to you for maintaining your library. And if you're a vendor, creating metadata and creating file names, even if they aren't sort of UCS file names. 
after that, we're going to just show off a few examples of some different sort of compound workflows, the idea of chaining the different workflows together, and just some sort of common troubleshooting things that I use them for in my own library. And then we're going to break down three separate libraries, a library of mine called Ether. Soundmorph has sent me a library called Doom Drones 2 that they were sort of curious to see how I would tackle converting that. So we're going to do that. And Frank Bree over at the Recordist has sent me two libraries, Storm Lake and Thunderstorm 4. And uh, he also is interested in sort of converting his library and is a little bit stuck. And so I said, well, let me have a let me have a look and let's see. We'll do this live and we'll see what we can come up with. So that's the goal. We're going to look at a pretty cool tool that exists in SoundMiner for uploading metadata at the very end of it. And then we'll wrap it all up. So let's dive in.